And now, Kristen, we're going to talk with Carl Bremer, the Executive Director for the Audubon Society of Greater Denver. And, you know, this organization is much different than the Listen Foundation. It's not just locally based, but has a local impact as well as a national impact, perhaps a global impact. I'm not really quite sure. So talk to right. me a little and bit about I that. I think they're, they're, you're going to find that they're a little bit more than what you traditionally think of the Audubon Society. And I'm really excited to have uh, Carl here. Carl. Well, yeah. Carl, welcome to the show. Thank you. So, Carl, talk a little bit about the Audubon Society. What is it, and is it just birds? <laughs> uh, well, it's known nationally as a birding organization, the National Audubon Society. That's their, I guess, their big thing. Um, but we, there are about 400 chapters, over 400 chapters across the country, and so we're the local chapter, the Denver chapter. And we do focus on birds, but we also focus on uh, the natural environment of the Denver area. Um, you know, in order to have birds, you need habitat and all the other things that go with the habitat. So, um, so we do focus on different parts of that. Right, and eco the ecosystems are pretty important to the birds. Absolutely. And frankly, to us as human beings. Yes. And so, what types of things are you doing at the Audubon to, you know, first of all, tell the location of where you're located and um, in the Denver metro area, but most of them are in the more of a, um, the, forest areas of the urban areas of cities. Right, right. A lot of the Audubon chapters, a lot of Audubon um, centers are now located in urban areas. Hmm. Um, our nature center is located at, at Chatfield State Park, uh, right across from Waterton Canyon. Um, and we have a, a building there where we offer programs, not just on the weekends, but we have school groups that come out there as well. We have a lot of school groups that come out, mostly in the spring, but also uh, throughout the year, fall, um, and sometimes we have uh, um, camp programs in the uh, summer, too. So when you're doing those things, outside of just talking about the habitats and the environments, um, birding's a popular pastime for people. It is. Um, how, how is the organization sort of bridging both education as well as, as more of the hobby enthusiast or the birding <laughs> enthusiast? That's a good question. Yeah, I think birding is, I think it's like the second uh, most popular hobby in the country after gardening. Uh, a lot of people uh, do bird feeding, feed birds in their yard. Um, and a lot of people do go bird watching. Uh, a lot of our members either do both. They'll do, some people are just, they just like to do the feeding the birds in their yards. Um, and then we do have some of the folks that really like to go out and I guess you can say the hardcore birding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would, um, so I would love for you to talk about the bird banding. The Don't, bird banding, yeah. I know. I figured you were going to ask about yeah. that. Because <laughs> that's amazing. You have to bring your children out to see the bird yes. banding. Yes, we do at our nature center at Chatfield. Uh, we have every May, we do something called bird banding. Um, and it's a scientific research. It's actual scientific research where they do put up bird nets. Uh, they're very fine mist nets. Um, and the birds don't see them, so they fly into these nets. And uh, the scientists take these birds out and we bring them to what we call our bird banding station. It's a pavilion. And the scientist there has the bird in her hand and we have school groups that come out or families. I know Kristen's family has come out. Um, and she has the bird right there and they do the measurements on the birds. Um, they, they, um, they take the measurements, they weigh them, but then they talk about why they're doing this. Uh, we do it in the spring because of the migrating birds. Yeah. Birds are migrating at that time of year, so we get a lot right. of different kinds of birds. Um, and then at some point after she's done doing that, she'll let the, sometimes she'll let the kids touch the bird, and then oh. she'll pick one child to release the bird. Oh, yeah. that's it's neat. really Yeah, it's Very really, fun. people love it. I've had a lot of people who are not even really interested in birding that will come out and uh, just come see these. You it's, know, see this. it's an amazing experience, a scientific experience right in front of your, your, your children. Well, and, uh, and I know my boss's daughter, she went to Nebraska and, and did this bird banding mm -hmm. activity and she did it with whipping cranes that were migrating. And oh, so wow. they just sat there for really long periods of time waiting. And then when they came, it was like this great um, experience, experience because they're not very common. And this mm -hmm. is just happening just and it's, it's just, it's just so happening right, right down here. the road. Yes. I love that. Yes. <laughs> well, Carl, when we come back, um, we have to run to break, but when we come back, we'll be talking more about what you're doing over at the Audubon Society. But before we go to break, how can people learn about your organization or contact you to bring their, their groups out to learn about banding or any of those things? Sure. Uh, they can call us at 303-973-9530 or just go to our website uh, at denveraudubon.org. And what I find is 
many organizations look at, um, corporations look at different ways that they can connect to the communities. There's many that are interested in co connecting with outdoors. And I think yours is a great nonprofit to really look at and when they're looking at community giving and community volunteerism, they can work with your organization. Tell us a little bit about how you are connected to the, um, how your organization serves our community and serves individuals, your members and so forth. Okay. Well, as um, we do a lot of school programs, uh, both at the schools and at our nature center, uh, because we're so far south in Denver, it's hard for a lot of schools to come down to our center. Uh, so usually that transportation is a very, it's a lot of times it's costly for the schools um, and it's hard to get the students down there. So that's one area that we're always looking for ways for uh, people to help us, um, help get more of those children down to the uh, nature center. We do get a lot of programs down there, but one thing we're starting to do now, we're piloting this year and we did receive a grant for this, was to uh, have do a longer term program with the schools rather than just going to the school once, doing a program, and then that's it. Uh, we want to do a longer term program. Uh, a lot of our programs are science based because of the environmental science or sure. uh, ecology. Uh, we do incorporate writing and some other um, disciplines in that as well. But um, so this year we have two schools that we're working with. It's actually interesting with your, your previous guest. We were working with a school in uh, Highlands Ranch that has deaf uh, children and we're piloting a year-long program with them, um, going to the school, doing um, different lessons there, and then having them come down to our nature center. Coming down to our nature center was a little bit of a barrier for them, um, so we were able to get that grant to do that. Uh, to do this with other schools, though, we'll need, we will need money, uh, more money or funding to be able to do that, or we're partnering with the schools to do that. Well, and Carl, I would, I would assume, too, with, with STEM education, it, it's we're, such yes. a central point right yes. now here in the United States. This programming around um, environmental sciences as well as biological sciences and mm -hmm. all of those things that go on around the sciences as well as the... the engineering and math issues that go on with this. I mean, there are so many things you could learn with this that potentially um, this STEM linkage could really provide some cool benefits to the community. Sure. Can you address that a little bit and, and how, the, how the Audubon's work potentially fits into the STEM the issue? Step. Well, a lot, of, as I was mentioning, a lot of what we cover is science, biology. We mm -hmm. do try to incorporate math. Um, we're starting to do more, uh, some of the chemistry too, uh, with the water quality mm -hmm. at, the, mm. at the Nature Center. We have some ponds there and we do um, pond studies there and we're starting to incorporate some of the chemistry that goes with uh, testing the water quality. So a lot, of, a lot of schools are looking for that science connection and a lot mm -hmm. of times the teachers may not know how to do the science or you know, what, you know, how to incorporate that into what they need to teach. And so we can bring that in uh, using, using birds and nature and you know, pond ecology and things like that. Um, I think that really is, and we've talked to some of the teachers and they are really, the teacher that we're working with in Highlands Ranch is very appreciative that we're there to help right. them teach this science because a lot of times they may not have that background that we may have mm -hmm. and they may not have those resources that we have. A lot of the schools may not have you know, a nature center to go to or you know, these scientists to do these actual programs with. So. And, and connecting kids with nature is well, also a too. big emphasis. Absolutely, yes, yes. And I'm glad you brought that up because that is another big thing that we do is trying to get kids outdoors. Um, besides the STEM, it's the whole health um, mm -hmm. issues that a lot, of, you know, a lot of kids are not getting outside anymore. Um, you know, because of TVs or computers or phones and <laughs> all of yeah. that, a lot of kids are staying indoors. So what we do is we try to incorporate with um, a lot of our family programs. We have a nature program for uh, preschoolers and their moms, for example, um, and that's you know getting kids outdoors. We're trying to get them outdoors and exploring the nature that's right in their own neighborhoods. You know, they don't necessarily have to go all the way to the mountains to go see nature. I mean, it's right in their own neighborhoods. And that's what the great thing about birds, going yeah. back to birds. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, <laughs> a everywhere. there's a lot of connections that corporations and individuals mm -hmm. can really connect onto. Is, is there a project, a, a, short, a longer term project that a corporation can really help you with? And I know you mentioned the, chil the youth program, but how can they really make an impact on your organization and basically the community? Well, definitely we will need more support with uh, those longer, trying to do more of those longer term programs with the schools. We will need support with that. Um, you know, a lot of times corporations, folks there, we are, 
like a lot of nonprofits, we're looking for expertise in marketing and accounting and a lot of those different areas are pub you know, publicity. So uh, if they can help us in those areas too. Um, you know, even looking for board members that can have, we're a lot of uh, in nonprofits are looking for board members. Um, and corporations can help in that way. We do have volunteer projects at our nature center. There's always something that needs to yeah. be done down there. Yep. <laughs> uh, yep. to upkeep the, the nature center and keep that uh, you know fresh and new. We have uh, um, native plant gardens there uh, to teach people how to plant native plants in their yards. So oh, they can neat. help that way too. So there's a lot of different areas, but I know one thing we're trying to do is really reach more schools. Yeah. Um, probably more urban schools. Well, I just was with the DPS school that some of the kids came out to Littleton, which is mm -hmm. north of your area, not much. No. And they, the kids said this was, this was country for them. And so <laughs> going down to the visitor center, which is not that much farther, I mean, mm -hmm. basically it's it a 20 minute ride from some of the DPS schools. Right. So if, if you're saying if a corporation helps with the transportation and helps with, with yes. you know, basically the organization of once you get them down there, you can organize the whole program because that's what you're, you're, you know. Right. And, and then do you want to be able to get into the schools themselves, going, having outreach into the schools? Absolutely, yes, yes. We do like to go to the schools several times and that's part of this whole year-long project is going to the schools because we want the kids to also know that nature, as I was mentioning before, um, nature is in their backyard. They don't have to go all the way down to the nature center, although we would like them to. <laughs> right. It is good for them to see that there are other areas, but we try to teach them about nature in their own backyard. Um, so that's, yeah, so we like to do a lot and of And they don't have to go to the schools. mountains. They have a great visitor center where you're located. Exactly. Interesting. Exactly. And we do have a lot of volunteers, but it does take, we do need professional staff, and that takes... You know, that's, that's not free. <laughs> right, absolutely. So. Well, Carl, you know, we've been talking about successful partnerships in the show today and, and how community partnerships really do matter. Have you had a successful partnership historically that's really brought a lot of change or brought a great result to the Audubon Society? Um, we have. We actually started a partnership with uh, 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 the Wingate Hotel. Uh, that's through Business Service Corps. Yeah, yeah. Yep, through PU. Um, they came down to our nature center. They actually came to us. They chose us because they were having a problem with a woodpecker um, pecking on their, their building. We have that so, um, <laughs> and, so. And they were very helpful, weren't <laughs> we you? We did. We did. We tried <laughs> to give them all, you know, a lot of different advice to help them you know, get rid of that woodpecker. And we even gave them this big you know, woodpecker house because a lot of times that's what that woodpecker is looking for. Uh, but they came down to our nature center and helped us with some projects down there. Um, and we, in return, they've also been letting us use their um, hotel for our board meetings, which is kind of nice for us yeah. to get out of our offices mm -hmm. and go somewhere that feels a little bit more professional. So we have been using every other month we could do our board meetings at the, the Wingate Hotel. So, and there's other other um, companies that we work with too. They um, always give you a nice out. silent auction. And they do. Yeah. <laughs> they give a silent auction. Yes, yes. And then, and then, what was nice for the Wingate, they had team building opportunities. Mm -hmm. They were able to really. Um, uh, integrate their staff on working together on this project and they came out several times and they continue to come out to help them out with various volunteer projects which yes. is nice. Yeah, the that's manager awesome. comes out a lot, yes. Th that's awesome. So Carl, what's the most important thing the Audubon Society here in Denver needs and or wants this holiday season? What do you <laughs> hope to, what do you hope to see going hope to forward see? here in the next three to six months? Three to six months. Um, Boy, oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> um, well, we definitely would like to have a very successful uh, Colorado Gives Day. <laughs> Absolutely, that nice. that's coming right up, right up. On yeah, December 4th. On December 4th. And you have a nice yes. mas matching program that's going on also with that, right? With the Yes, yeah. yes, uh, through the First Bank gives a, a match to Community First and then they, they give that to a lot of the nonprofits. Yep, absolutely. And Colorado Gives Day, for listeners that don't know, is December 4th. And you go online at givingfirst.org, look up um, the Denver Audubon Society, and, and make your donations there. And there will be matching donations from First Bank um, here in Colorado. Carl, we're running out of time, but I want to say thank you so much for being with us. This was really interesting. Well, thank you for having me. And I can't wait Thanks, to bring my, my Girl Scout Please troops and my down. Boy Scout yes. troops and everybody down for, to oh, Chatfield. Yeah. That'll be yep. awesome. Well, yes. thank you. And, and Kristen, we'll be back for more. But to learn more about the Denver Audubon Society, go to denveraudubon.org or give them a call if you want to take your group down 303-973-9530.